To begin our Sunrise Smart Start on a really happy note here, a shock and a sigh of relief for dozens of nonprofits across our area. They're about to receive some surprise funding that they say will really change what they can do and who they can help for years to come. A huge announcement yesterday coming from Tom Galasano, handing out $360 million to more than 80 groups from Rochester, Buffalo, and Syracuse. The founder of Paychecks called out each organization in the room yesterday, detailing how much they're getting as someone from the group walked on stage to recognize the gift. Before this reveal, see, these people had no idea this was coming. Galasano went over why this is happening. The only wealth that you get to keep is there, which you give away. So today, we're going to give away some. Excuse me. <clears throat> we are committing $360 million to nonprofit organizations across upstate New York. I'm sorry, I'm getting choked up. The recipients, they just heard it for the first time there, were broken up into categories such as healthcare with Golisano Children's Hospital getting $10 million, education with a number of local private schools receiving funding, animal services at Lollipop Farm, a big gift as well. And as one might expect from Golisano, millions going to groups helping those with developmental disabilities. Among those recipients was the Mary Cariola Center and Ark of Monroe. They called this news stunning and exciting as they shared their gratitude. They further add that funding is often hard to come by, so a donation like this will make a world of difference in the lives of hundreds of thousands of people these groups all serve. I think the, the fact that it's unrestricted dollars is really exceptional, and that gives us so much latitude to make really profound differences and changes in people's lives. And there's usually so many loopholes that we have to jump through and so many things we have to promise to receive funding, to receive these dollars unrestricted. It's just life-altering. You can find a full list of the nonprofits, schools, and organizations that have been included in Golisano's generous donation. All of that available at RochesterFirst.com. It is 6.50. More headlines new this morning. One of the suspects charged with murder in connection to a shooting on Cuba Place in Rochester is due in court today. 20-year-old Timothy Brooks Jr. arrested in the case of 39-year-old James Jackson Jr.'s murder. Police say August 30th, Jackson crashed his car on Cuba Place after he was shot multiple times. He died at the hospital. Another suspect, 17-year-old Rafael Marquez, was also arrested previously and charged with murder. Police believe Marquez was the shooter and Brooks was with him when they tried to rob the victim. Brooks is due in court at 2 p.m. An Ontario County audit has revealed that Matthew Hoos, the former county clerk, embezzled nearly half a million dollars over 10 years. The county says there's no realistic way to recover the money, sadly. Hoos died suddenly in 2023, and the investigation started when the state notified the county of delayed payments. Now, a year and a half later, the state police investigation has reportedly found Hoos worked alone in this scheme. The county has since made a number of security changes since notifying the theft. The current administrator says this entire process does hurt the public trust, but they are working hard to make sure it doesn't happen again. The county is aware that the actions outlined this afternoon constitute a violation of the public's trust, and it's, imper it's imperative that we strive to ensure this type of behavior cannot occur again. This is a tragedy all the way around. And does it keep me up at night? Absolutely. Um, I wish there were different outcomes that we could have achieved. When the Ontario County Sheriff's Office investigated Hoos' death back in 2023, deputies at that time said the cause did not appear to be suspicious. More than a week after the presidential debate, a lot of people in the city of Springfield, Ohio, say their lives have been upended, and disrupted by these unfounded claims about Haitian immigrants eating pets that former President Donald Trump made. Vice President Kamala Harris spoke to a group of black journalists Tuesday saying Trump's remarks are a crying shame. Trump has not backed away from the comments. In fact, he told a group he was planning to go to Springfield to address illegal immigration. News 8's Teresa Marsenberg spoke with the pastor of the church she attended as a child and a young adult there in Ohio. He and the head of the Community Center for Haitians say Trump's visit would be a disaster. We still have to deal with the chaos from the words that he put out there and now for his presence again. I, I, I couldn't imagine what, what can happen. They're perpetuating the same lies and they have not stopped, even though uh, all of our city officials, our law enforcement, everyone has uh, pretty much told them that they were false accusations. Those were false reporting. 
Here in Rochester, we heard again from Idair Louis, who owns a Haitian restaurant and grocery store on Main Street. He says Trump's comments are yet another example of an attack that fuels hatred and animosity toward Haitian communities, feeds negative stereotypes, and only forces deeper division and distrust. Your sunrise traffic here updates this morning. Still good to go on all of our main expressways. Not one accident to warn you about. We'll keep it that way and bring you another update as you're looking live from the west side when we see you again at about 720. Yeah, we're halfway through the week and we're already looking ahead to a really huge weekend of fun coming up in Rochester. A big football game, a lot of events mm -hmm. coming along with it. The Frederick Douglass HBCU Classic. Aran Spitzer joins us live downtown previewing everything to expect. Aran. Yeah, guys, the city is calling this weekend, this game, the weekend of hope. Now, the goal is to bridge the gap or strengthen the relationship between the Rochester community and law enforcement. Now, historically, black colleges and universities are institutions that were founded before the Civil Rights Act of 1964 for black students. For this game, Central State from Ohio will play against Albany State, which is in Georgia. The game starts at 1 p.m. at the Rochester Community Sports Complex. Deputy Chief Chief of Police for RPD Keith Stitz says he was inspired to bring the game to Rochester after he was taken to a game when he was younger. He says the police department has to be more innovative when it comes to connecting with the community. Now, aside from that, there are a bunch of events leading up to the game, which start tomorrow, meant to push kids into higher education. The events prior to the game is number one is to educate our community about HBCUs, HBCUs, um, and, and get them to understand that, you know, um, these there's schools out there that's that's very good schools and very inexpensive. And um, in terms of culture, you know, you, you're going to leave the city of Rochester and go to a, a culture that you're very familiar with. Now, that game is on Saturday. Ticket sales end tonight. So if you want those, you got to grab them. You can get that link along with more information on the event at our website, rochesterfirst.com. Reporting from Rochester, Ron Spitzer, News 8. Not to mention another great use out of the old soccer stadium. So yeah. that'll be nice. Yeah. Putting some uh, fans in the seats there coming right. up on Saturday. View from SOTUS. How about this? Looks yeah. beautiful. Look yeah. at that. Yeah, sunrise just a moment ago at uh, 6.54. We are enjoying this great view there. A uh, little bit of blue, some clouds mixed in there as well. Uh, so uh, kind of 50-50, uh, we'll say. I do think clouds went out just a bit maybe this afternoon, but otherwise uh, no chance for any rain. Those clouds will be not be producing rain. Upper 70s, uh, a couple of degrees warmer than we normally are. Here's your eight-day forecast. Uh, dry stretch keeps on going. Uh, yeah. Friday, we've got that sunshine, wow. 80, and then uh, dry through the weekend. It's another week until we'll see any even chances. Yeah, a two-week run there getting in the fall. Thank yeah. you, James, and thanks for watching us here at Sunrise. Our next update in 30 minutes. And have a great day. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, X, and on our app for news and weather.